call the honourable member for Dawson. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I offer my congratulations to the member for Lindsay and wish her a long and fruitful career and great representation on behalf of her people. And congratulate her once again on the maiden speech. On the 27th of April, on a rainy morning in Mackay, about 700 people gathered on the lawns of the Mackay Regional Council precinct to take a stand against the green lunatic fringe. They did what most had never done before. They protested. They were amazed that they had to do this, but they were fed up with the thousands of green lefties and commentators from thousands of kilometres away telling them what jobs they could have, what companies they could do business with, what future they could expect for their children. Central and North Queenslanders could generally ignore the rants and rubbish flowing from the south. They just got on with their lives. But when the announcement was made that a former Greens leader, an ageing hippie from Tasmania, was heading north with a convoy to save us from ourselves, well, that was the last straw. After the disbelief that people from as far away as Tasmania should be telling North Queenslanders what to do and think came resolve and then followed action. Strangely enough, Bob Brown uttered some resounding words of wisdom which are written on his website and they explain exactly what happened when his convoy came to central Queensland and North Queensland. Bob Brown said, people standing up for what they believe in has unbeatable power. Yes, Mr Brown was very much right on that point and the people of central and North Queensland and indeed across the rest of the state of Queensland stood up for what they believed in and demonstrated that unbeatable power when they, when they rejected Labor's weasel words on mining and the leanings of the Green left, uh, and they handed the member for Maribyrdong a loss in what was being styled as the unlosable election for the Labor Party. Mr Deputy Speaker, I would like to pay tribute to the Economic Development Group, which actually drove that protest in Mackay, and the other leaders in the community who supported their stance. The Resource Industry Network is a not-for-profit industry group which represents the small and medium-sized businesses which benefit directly from the resources sector and associated industries. The Resource Industry Network swung into action to stick up for the region, creating a website, uh, www.forthefutureofourregion.org.au. Uh, they produce Go Galilee signs, Go Galilee t-shirts and even earrings. Uh, there are some, these are some of the words that were shared by our community leaders as people gathered in the park to, in the rain on the first of two protest days. From the Resource Industry Network director, Mick Crow, he said, we're here for our future. This isn't about whether a coal mine gets built or not. This is a protest about whether our industry has a future or not. We want to be heard. We'll be respectful. It's not about politics. It's about our town and our people. The Mayor of Mackay, Councillor Greg Williamson, said this, we support democracy. We support everybody who wants to have a voice. But don't come into our patch and say you can't do what supports 60 per cent of your regional economy. He was joined by the Mackay Chamber of Commerce Treasurer, Simon Viglianti, who said it's one degree of separation between coal and our livelihoods. Another Mackay Regional Councillor, former rugby league great, and now Green Shirts leader Marty Bella said they come from down south. They don't know us. We create wealth. They use it. And again, Mick Crow, the director of the Resource Industry Network, summed it up when he said, we need to show Australia we're here, we matter, and we need a future. We need to show all the people of Australia and the politicians of Australia that if you won't back our futures, we can't back you. He said to the community, help us get a voice. And speaking after the second rally, Mick Crow went on to say, we're the people who are going to live with the legacy of where the mining gets supported in this state. Are we in great shape as a region because of coal? Absolutely. Will we stay that way? Not if we don't build new mines. The Galilee is the platform that gives us 30 or 40 years. If we don't make that investment, if that doesn't happen, how do we explain the next 30 to 40 years apart from shrinking? It's logical. The world needs it. We're good at it. How do we make it happen? The collective voice from this rally and a second one held about two weeks later was this. Galilee, Galilee, a future for our families. At about the same time as the Green activists were heading north to tell us what to do, a revelation came forth 
from Labor's national conference about their policies on mining jobs. Labor's plan? A just transition away from mining. Uh, though Labor tried to paint this as some sort of scare campaign, the truth was there in black and white in Labor's policy documents. Labor promised to create a just, just transition authority, which would, according to their documents, have the power to implement pooled redundancy and redeployment schemes for workers in coal power stations and associated mines. This was referred to in a fact sheet in a media release from the then opposition leader uh, in the ALP's national platform and in Labor's uncosted economy-wide climate policy. Labor was making its intention to kill off coal jobs crystal clear. The document specifically listed the Bowen Basin as one of the, area, one of the target areas for their unbelievable hit on the coal sector. In their climate policy, Labor said they would spend $8.5 million to establish pooled redundancy schemes for coal miners. How did we get to the point where the Labor Party, the so-called Workers' Party, wanted taxpayers' money to actually put people out of a job? And we saw one Labor MP after another, including uh, the leader then, the deputy leader then, uh, the shadow environment minister then, use the Adani Carmichael coal project as their whipping boy, uh, which was essentially smashing the coal sector. The, the member for Port Adelaide said, I do not support opening new mines in the Galilee Basin whether it's by Adani, Clive Palmer or anyone else for that matter. The member for Griffiths is openly against the mine, stating I've been on the record as opposing the Adani Carmichael coal mine for over two years. In 2018, during the, the Bateman by-election, the member for Maribyrnong uh, said in reference to the Adani project, I don't support it because it doesn't add up commercially and environmentally. The member for Sydney said it doesn't stack up. And the new deputy leader of the opposition, uh, said this on coal. I mean, the, the, the global market for thermal coal has collapsed and wonderful. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. He was asked, the collapse of thermal coal is a good thing, you said. His response, the, the global market for thermal coal, because what that implies is the world is moving to more renewable energy sources. Won't that affect jobs in Australia quite significantly, the reporter asked him. Oh, well, it, 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 it just what it means is that the, the, the economic case for opening up the Galilee Basin isn't now what it was a decade ago. Shame. So what does the coal industry mean to the Mackay region? I can tell you, Mr Deputy Speaker, it means it, produce, it provides 58 per cent of the region's economy. The resource industry network uh, for the future of our region explains it this way. For our businesses, the region's coal industry is the engine room of our economy, responsible uh, last year for 43 per cent of economic activity. It's something we can't afford to lose. For our jobs, almost 18,000 direct jobs and uh, support for 58 per cent of Mackay's total employment makes it clear that without a thriving coal industry, the only way for regional employment is down. For our kids, the Mackay region is home to more than 15,000 school-aged children who deserve the same opportunities as their metropolitan counterparts to win skilled, well-paid jobs. And for the community, Coal mining is the economic glue that holds the Mackay region together, making it the envy of other regional cities and towns who see their people and future drifting away. Here are some more fast facts on coal mining and its direct benefits to the Mackay region from the Queensland Resources Council. $1.1 billion in wages, 17,974 full-time jobs, $3.4 billion spent locally, 1,810 local businesses paid, 261 community groups helped. Yet Labor just didn't get it, and despite once claiming to be the proud party of the worker, Labor politician after Labor politician bagged the industry, bagged Dani, bagged the Galilee Basin and bagged thermal and metallurgical coal mines. They offered weasel words rather than reassurance to workers in our mining and construction industries because they had to do deals in inner city seats to save their politicians. The CFMEU in Queensland had to come out and fight for the jobs of their members in the face of a complete lack of support for their industry from Labor leaders. The CFMEU saw this just transition plan for what it was, a threat to their existence. And they demanded Labor candidates sign a pledge of support for their industry. CFMEU Queensland President Stephen Smyth led the charge. They put up a motion which stated, we will request a pledge from them. If you want support for us, you pledge your support for the coal industry. He further added, if we have to, we will campaign against those MPs, no matter which party they're in, even if they're perched up in the little cosy suburb somewhere in the southeast drinking their lattes. He spoke of the angst of coal miners. 
We watch proud men and women caring for their families that are reduced to sitting by and watching their futures be decided in the political and media arena as families struggle through purchasing their homes, educating their children, preparing their retirements. They always have to watch their pride and ability to care for their partners and children wane as the challenge of just transition looms. Um, I had on pre-poll uh, a CFMEU member in his hat, his high-vis union shirt, uh, walk up to me on none other than Labor Day, shake my hand, take my card and say, you're the one I'm backing, mate. He even jumped in a photo on Facebook for me. Another union member turned up with his lifetime union membership card, CFMEU again. He also showed me an old wallet that he was carrying. It had his mother and father's lifetime Labor Party membership in it. And he said, because of all of this, for the first time in my life, probably in generations in my family, I will not be voting for the Labor Party. I'll be voting for you. He brought it in to whisper sorry to him before he cast his vote. There are other issues which kept people and my electorate awake at night when they contemplated the prospect of a shortened Labor government. The retiree tax, the housing tax, the electricity tax in the form of a new carbon emissions policy, uh, weak borders, and you know, siding with the state Labor government in their attack on farmers through tree clearing legislation that was going to be taken federally, and the state Labor government's new so-called sustainability regulations on commercial fishermen, which are really the most unsustainable laws that you could ever see, reducing some commercial fishermen's catch by 80 per cent. That's not sustainability. That's a shutdown of an industry. I no doubt that we've seen such an amazing ray of bad laws. I've no doubt that we've ever seen such an amazing ray of bad laws, and Labor wanted to introduce them all at the same time. It galvanised people into action. I had big attendances at a range of meetings that I held with groups that were very worried about their future, uh, a future potentially under a shortened Labor government. Truckies once again turned up in numbers, concerned about the return of a road safety remuneration tribunal, property developers, real estate agents gathering in my office and elsewhere, worried about the prospect of Labor's negative gearing policy, a tax they saw on the housing sector, cane farmers, cattlemen, uh, fishermen, all gathering battling the state Labor government, as I said, on these so-called sustainability uh, laws, on reef laws, on vegetation management laws, uh, laws that Labor were talking about amplifying in the federal sphere. One businesswoman in Mackay, a financial planner who was about to retire, walked into my office one day and asked what she could do to help. She couldn't stand the thought of a shortened Labor government. Many others of all ages and all walks of life stepped up to help in all sorts of ways, some putting in long, long hours. There are many people I want to thank during the election campaign, but I want to particularly mention the following. Margie McLean, uh, a saint. Leanne Fordyce, another saint. Ari Oliver, Chris Bonanno, Nicole Batsloff, Laurie Pinder, Frank and Margaret Cover, Laurie Nielsen, Robin Hall and Colin Hoffmeyer, Terry and Dulcie Dennis, uh, Richard Wallace, Graham and Lynn Downing, David Caracciolo, Jack McLean, Greg Porter, Alan Gascoigne, John Cotter. In the Whit Sundays, people like Stan Newell, Stan Wright, Sophie and Lawson Cam, Helen Loft, Di Dobbins, Olga Dufty, uh, and uh, Elsa and Fred Ranke. In Bowen, Ian and Pauline Shields, Bruce Hedich and uh, Helena Hedich, Hedich Bob, Bob Harris. Further north, uh, the newly minted Senator Susie MacDonald, uh, Julian Tomlinson, Peter Lindsay, Richard Stow, Ron the Braithwaite, John Honeycomb. Rob Town, Joe and Mary Moore, Neville Dickinson, Nelvi Dickinson, Jim and Jill Gist, Ray and Rosemary Menkins, Alan Parker, David Cox, Richard Bernardo, Tom and Jan Callow, my dedicated staff, uh, Linus Bonanno, Shelley Argent, Megan Kerr, Lauren Ballard, and some that are now left, some that come on temporarily just before the election, uh, Aaron or AJ Stebbins and Damien Tessman and a long-serving staff member of mine uh, who gave it his all uh, but has uh, since um, left my employment or left the employment in my office after, Dave Westman. I want to thank him very much for his tireless support over the years and his ongoing support. Michelle Landry's staff, or sorry, I should say the member for Capricornia's staff, I also want to uh, commend on their strong support, obviously, Dawson and Capricornia bounding each other. Um, 
uh, Jack McDougall, uh, Dana, Anna Howard and Nicole Neal. I want to pay particular tribute to Senator Matt Canavan and his strong support across the north. Uh, I was also happy to push for and see the delivery of, delivery of funding for a range of projects over the past uh, year. We've seen everything from a small boost to furnish and air condition a CWA house and Seaforth through to massive bridge building project uh, on the Horton River between Eyre and Townsville. In Mackay we're contributing six and a half million dollars to a Northern Beaches community hub, the fastest growing area of our city. We're putting three hundred thousand dollars into providing seating at Mackay Crater, the home of basketball in the city. Just under four million dollars will go towards the construction of a twenty bed drug rehab centre. $1.3 million going towards the upgrade of boat ramps and recreational fishing facilities. We provided $490,000 for lighting at Brothers Football Club, just under $200,000 for lights at Dolphins Football Club in Bacasia, $80,000 going to the Mackay Regional Social Development Coalition to teach leadership training uh, and financial management to grassroots community groups. And in the Whit Sundays, $5 million into repairing the Proserpine Entertainment Centre, smashed during Cyclone Debbie investing $2.5 million towards a maritime training centre so young men and women can do more of the training in that area where they're needed. We're providing uh, $75,000 to help Libby Edge and her eco-barge clean seas operation clean up marine debris and rehabilitate turtles. We're providing headspace services in the Whitsundays so vulnerable young people and their families can get more and ready access to help. And in April's budget, we announced almost $30 million for, to address flooding at the Hamilton Plains on Shoot Harbour Road. And uh, we're helping with sporting facilities in the Whitsundays as well. An extra $2.1 million for the Whitsunday Sports Park, uh, $200,000 for in, in synthetic bowling green at Cape Gloucester, uh, $480,000 for lighting upgrades at the Whitsunday Motorsports Club. And a project which will benefit the entire region is the construction of the Urana Dam. We've put $10 million forward to progress that project to get it shovel ready. Urana has the potential to create up to 20,000 hectares of new farming land adjacent to Bowen and Collinsville. Also in Bowen, we're investing $5 million so the Bowen Hospital can purchase a CT scanner and associated refurbishments. Almost $900,000 has been committed to the Malongal Creek Boat Club upgrade in the Burdekin. Work has begun on the Horton River floodplain upgrade and bridge replacement. This is a uh, half a billion dollar project which will provide flood immunity along a near 14 kilometre stretch of the Bruce Highway as well as to replace the narrow and dangerous bridge that has no side rails. At Guru, $35,000 to help the daycare centre with their recovery from the recent floods. In Townsville, $195 million going towards stage two of the water security pipeline. Uh, almost $500,000 going towards Townsville basketball for upgrades and additions. $5 million to stage two of the Oasis Townsville. Uh, a Veterans Wellness Centre, a support hub for veterans and ex-ADF personnel. In the August budget, we announced $144 million for Townsville Ring Road, uh, for, in the April budget, I should say, $144 million for Townsville Ring Road Stage 5, which will provide four laning of a final six kilometre stretch of this road link. The Townsville Turf Club also uh, received a helping hand with just under $200,000 going towards the upgrade of their female jockey facilities. And as we look to the future, uh, one thing that I am very much focused on is securing a regional deal for the Mackay, Isaac and Whitsunday region. This was my commitment to the people of Dawson uh, ahead of the election and I have been uh, working with the region's mayors, uh, Greg Williamson, Andrew Wilcox and Anne Baker, to put together the details of an agreed plan of transformational projects for our region projects that will future-proof our region, projects that will actually ensure a, a continuation of profitability and sustainability in existing industries in our region, uh, whether that be mining as we move perhaps towards more automation in mining. We want to see uh, work on that done in our region, uh, not in uh, a capital city, not certainly in a, another country. We want to see it in our region. Uh, we have opportunities to diversify in our agricultural sector, to provide more profitability to farmers. Uh, we also see ability to transform our region altogether into a, a new tourist sector, whether it be more land-based tourism opportunities in the Whitsundays or making Mackay a destination in its own right rather than as a gateway to the Whitsundays and the islands. These are things that I'm going to be pursuing uh, in my re-election as the member for Dawson. I thank all of those who cast their vote for me 
uh, so strongly in carrying every single booth across the electorate. Uh, it's an honour and a privilege to serve the people of Dawson. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah.